In the summer of 1945, Japan was pretty much finished in its uh, war with the United States. The country had been saturation bombed for about a year, perhaps more. Um, their armies were all more or less defeated, and there wasn't any chance that they were going to be able to fight off the Americans, especially once two nuclear bombs were dropped on them. The situation was hopeless. There was just no way out of this. There was a group of militarists that were controlling the Japanese government at the time who said, fine, the situation is hopeless, okay, then we're simply going to die. We're going to die on our feet. We're not going down because a Japanese does not surrender. And the conduct of the Japanese fighting men during the Second World War leads one to actually <laughs> agree with these guys. They did, the Japanese did occasionally surrender, but generally, certainly more so than anyone else, they had a habit of fighting to the death uh, when their situation was hopeless rather than surrender, or they'd kill themselves rather than be taken prisoner. This business of the Japanese fighting on until they were wiped out as a people was a serious matter. Um, but uh, later events turned out that the Japanese people weren't with these guys. They didn't agree. They uh, saw the war as the problem and they just wanted to end it. But in the Japanese um, self-image that had been created and built up in the 20th century, the Japanese do not surrender. We endure the unendurable. We die on our feet. We face our problems. We, um, if, if it becomes necessary, yes, we'd stare death right in the face and let it come at us and hit us with all it's got. Fair enough. Um, the Japanese emperor, of course, realized that the situation was hopeless and um, that uh, some sort of accommodation with the Americans was going to have to be uh, made. He also understood that most Japanese people saw things that way. They didn't back the militarists who wanted to commit national suicide. So he came at them. Um, he did an end run on their own propaganda. He said, these generals tell you that, uh, that, uh, that the way out is only hard. We're Japanese. We're not um, afraid of dealing with hard, unpleasant truths. And we have the strength of character to deal with um, horrific calamity up to and including death. Therefore, um, they're telling you to face the fact that now is the time where we have to die as a people. And the emperor said, that's the easy way out. We're Japanese. We face the hard truths. We take the hard way. To us, to die is natural. It's easy. Um, we are the descendants of the sun god. Um, I'm going to, I'm, as your emperor, I'm going to ask you to, to do something even harder than what, the, than what the generals are telling you to do. I'm going to ask you to surrender. That's even harder because it goes exactly against what we are as a people. We don't surrender. But I'm your emperor. Obey me. Now, of course, the Japanese people were sort of, oh, thank God, there. Now, there's, there's a sort of a logical way out of the mess, the, the corner we've painted ourselves into with our philosophy of, uh, of uh, stoicism and brave, uh, bravely facing the inevitable in life. And of course the Japanese were more or less relieved that the problem was over. To them the problem wasn't the idea of being conquered. The to them the issue was ending this insane war where they're just sitting there defenselessly getting bombed. And um, as later events turned out, the Japanese did not want to die as a people. Now, I think it's pretty obvious by now where I'm going with this. Uh, suicide. I'm not going to say, in spite of what some people might think, that um, assisted suicide is a bad idea, or that suicide in and of itself is necessarily a bad idea, but it's not something to be taken lightly. Um, if uh, someone is well and truly checkmated by life, and there is no way out, I think it's a bit presumptuous of anyone else to tell them to keep on living simply as a prop for someone else's own ideas. It, like the, the way the Japanese generals decided that the Japanese people were going to follow them into national annihilation. It's a bit presumptuous um, because the idea of self-extinction is a deeply personal one. Um, 
And one of the things that I've always maintained is we don't know whether or not someone is actually at their wit's end. We don't know whether or not they're happy or they're miserable. We don't know. We can only observe their actions and we and listen to, to their words. What's going on inside here is going to be an unknown to us. So I don't know whether or not somebody has had enough of life. So it's not up to me to try and influence their decision one way or another. It's not up to me to egg people on. Uh, to kill themselves. Um, again, that's that's the Japanese generals talking, saying that, yes, I'm willing to die. Um, follow me, jumping on this bonfire, so we'll all die together. Um, no, the decision to jump onto that massive bonfire is something that has to be made by each individual person. Now, the other side of this coin is, of course, um, how do we know, as non-suicides, whether or not someone is at that point. We don't know. We don't know if that person who um, is talking about it and who is um, constantly plagued with the idea of killing themselves, we don't understand completely whether or not they are at that point. Again, we have nothing to go on but their words and their actions. We can't get in here to see if they are at their wit's end. And one of the problems is if people are committing suicide in order to end their suffering, um, chances are there's a, a good chance that um, they're in extremis. And when you're in extremis, it's darn hard to think clearly. And how do you deal with that? How do you deal with the fact that someone is in intolerable agony? They want to die, but their very intolerable agony is what clouds their judgment, um, uh, a cool judgment, which is what is required in the decision to live or not to live, Hamlet's to be or not to be. That is the question. Um, well, this is uh, a book which I think it's fair to say saved my life um, those many years ago when I was in extremis myself. Uh, it's William Styron, uh, one of the first people to come out in the wider world and talk openly about depression. It's interesting in that he said uh, he called um, depression a species of total insanity, madness, craziness, a whirling tempest of the brain and even that doesn't even come close to expressing the devastation that is wrought by depression however he says and I quote and this is one of uh, his best quotes if our lives had no other configuration but this we should want and perhaps deserve to perish he's admitting this if depression had no termination, then suicide would indeed be the only remedy. But one need not sound the false or inspirational note to stress the truth that depression is not the soul's annihilation. Men and women who have recovered from the disease, and there are countless, bear witness to what is probably its only saving grace. It is conquerable. Now, you note that he doesn't say that it will be conquered, because some people never recover from it, and I can only imagine that that's probably the most ghastly fate to befall a human being. Um, but the problem is, there's simply too much evidence that it is conquerable. So he does admit, yes, I can see that if we, we know for sure that your depression or whatever your state of suffering is um, irreversible and degenerative and uh, permanent, yes, it's pretty nuts to continue to exist. But unfortunately, there is simply too much evidence that it can be overcome. The trick is, and something that, we, that cries out for serious debate, is to find some way of striking a balance between people's legitimate right and choice and understandable desire 
to end their suffering as painlessly and as with as much dignity as possible and um, telling people or encouraging people or egging people on or deliberately exacerbating their suffering it is a false and in and to some people I guess inspirational note that depression is not conquerable I'm sorry but that is simply wrong thank you